I pointed out in my trailer reaction, it's been about two years since season two of The Boys. And you know what's happened since then? All of the Marvel Disney Plus shows. That's right. They only started in January 2021. Wow. So The Boys has never had to go up against that or a landscape where there is a ton of superhero quality superhero streaming content. But I think The Boys can handle it, especially because Invincible managed to do pretty well. Invincible had to go up against Falcon and Winter Soldier, and it wasn't doing so well week to week. But luckily, it lasted one more week than Falcon and Winter Soldier, and that's when everyone discovered it. It also had an amazing season finale. So I'll be curious, you know, luckily The Boys is uh, going up against Ms. Marvel, which is a very different type of superhero show. I would hope that everybody would watch both of them, but I think the realities of demographic breakdowns show that that's probably not the case. So I think there's definitely room for those two shows to coexist. And Obi-Wan, but that's Star Wars. So, I mean, less, I mean hopefully Obi-Wan will be nuts and fantastic, and then The Boys might have a bit of a problem. Uh, but we'll see. Well, it outlasts Obi-Wan as well, because uh, these are eight, eight episodes, whereas, of course, Disney Plus content is the usual six. So you get two more hours, and, of course, it debuts with three episodes. Uh, this on uh, June 3rd. I'm very excited, very excited. All right, let's break it down. Uh, here we go. So I actually love this open. Now, first off, this is the... This is the actor they've been using on their uh, YouTube channel with their Vaught News Network, Cameron Coleman. So I like that synergy. But what this opening is really about is Homelander using the talking points. Uh, and all, uh, you know, he's at the premiere of the Dawn of the Seven, and he's saying pretty much the same thing. And what's really brilliant to way this, about the way this is edited is that eventually they all sync up. And he's saying the same thing in every screen. And that's, of course, what he and the Vought PR team have come, come up with to get him past the Stormfront problem, where, of course, it was revealed that his girlfriend was uh, an evil Nazi uh, and had murdered quite a number of people. So he has to move past that. And he's saying, I'm just a guy who fell in, long, fell in love with the wrong woman. And I got to say, I think from a PR perspective, that's as strong an argument as he can make to try and get out of that. But, you know, look, we're doing the uh, Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial right now. I mean, this stuff is like ripped from the headlines in many ways. It's fascinating. So yeah, so I thought this opening was fantastic. And then he ends with the line that he's come up with, with him and the, P oh, who, let's see if it's him or the PR team. Uh, look at that. His eyes just are fantastic. <laughs> he's a, such a psychopath. It's fantastic. He just, uh, yeah, uh, you know, Anthony Starr is such an incredible actor here. And he says, I'm very excited for everyone to meet the real me. Uh, and as I said in my uh, reaction, I think there's some chance that even Homelander doesn't know who the real him is. Remember, he was raised in a lab facility. That's one of the reasons that he's a psychopath, because he didn't have any maternal care. He didn't have any love growing up. And they, that's one of the things the show has discussed. Uh, you know, Homelander, of course, has culpability for his actions, but he's also a product of his creation and his upbringing. I think that's what makes him a, a, a still somewhat a character that is not totally despicable, uh, that you know is a, can be a, still be a fan favorite. Because you, I think you know, look at him; he's really struggling. Our, our, and I think, of course, he's struggling with the mistakes that he's made. But I think that he is struggling. You know, I think Homelander doesn't understand why things go so poorly for him. He really, Vought could really benefit from having a psychiatrist on staff. Although I think that there would be a very high fight, fatality rate for them as well. All right, so. Then I don't. I'm, I wonder if this is his new home. Has he been brought to live in uh, a Vought headquarters, or is he waiting for someone? But he's looking in a mirror. He's literally doing some soul searching. He's looking at. He's taking a hard look in the mirror, uh, and we hear Starlight on the phone telling the boys that something's wrong with Homelander. There's his obsession with milk. I wonder, and, and she's like, he's gone nuts. Um, and <clears throat> you have to wonder, you know, like. Wasn't he nuts before? But it seems like maybe now he's um, out of control. You know, before Homelander, he was always, at least you could understand his motivations. But now, you know, maybe even Homelander doesn't understand why, he's, why he might do what he does. Uh, he's even out of his own self-control. Uh, so I, I want to stop here and talk about Starlight. I love that she switched back to her original costume. You know, she got sexed up last season, uh, and part of her rebellion uh, was insisting on that she go back to what she wants to wear. So I think that's great. 
And I think the Starlight character, she's now on the poster for this season. Only woman to make the cut, the official poster. I think that's partially because she has superpowers, visual, you know, very visual, uh, visually interesting powers. But also because her character has become quite interesting in that she is a double agent. She is a member of the Seven, but now she also works for the boys. So very interesting. I love it. And I wonder who he's caressing the blood spot of someone who's died. Was, you know, Stormfront moved to this facility? Has someone else he know been killed? Uh, we'll, we'll find out. I wish, I, I find it funny that uh, um, Homelander doesn't have any other change of clothes. He's always wearing his costume. Uh, and I think that's interesting. I think, you know, there's something, again, interesting about that from a being a, maybe a personal choice to a lack of things provided by Vought, because they always want him to, I mean, also a lack of him having any real persona, because he just is the, super, the superhero, because he was, you know, engineered in a lab, so there is no person there, and I think that's a part of the commentary as well. And so he's, he's talked, a bunch of quick edits here, but he says three key words that you can hear, love, mommy and daddy. He, of course, didn't have a mommy and daddy. Uh, he was a daddy, uh, but he lost uh, both chances as, you know, the woman that he, you know, raped uh, to pr produce Ryan, making him a father, and Stormfront, who he wanted to be Ryan's new mother. Uh, so a lot of interesting dynamics there. And he's like having a nervous breakdown, and I like the way it's edited that it kind of wakes up Butcher, you know? You know, the, the antithesis of Homelander. They're really the yin and yang of, this, of like the same, that's why they're locked in this battle. And I think that's why, I'll talk about why I think they chose the power set that they did for Butcher here. All right, so what's going on with Butcher? So we find out, there, I like that Ryan is getting along with him and he's getting along with Ryan. I think that they both need this human connection. It's really great. But you know, Ryan of course is half his, his ex-wife who was murdered horribly last season and he, who he almost got back together with. But the other half is Homelander who he despises. So uh, there's, I, I, I'm glad to see maybe he can overcome that, but that element's always gonna be a little bit there in their relationship. Um, that's, in, you know, Butcher, I guess, you know, Ryan doesn't have anything really to be upset about with Butcher because Butcher didn't do anything to him. Uh, but yeah, so Ryan's staying with Grace Mallory, uh, Butcher's f a former boss and whose grandchildren were killed by Lamplighter. So having Ryan is kind of like fixes her as well. It gives her this new lease on life. So I, I like, but I like them being together. And she's like, you're getting better. Uh, you know, but, I, but he's throwing, I like, look at these darts. They're so butcher, they're, they're custom darts. They not only have the UK flag on it, but his dog as well. And there's men's recreation. Uh, I thought it was very clever with the magazine being the eye. Uh, and Homelander, of course, is on the cover, again, in his costume. And uh, she says, you're even taking orders for, uh, you're, not, you're not drinking. And you're even taking orders from Hugh Campbell. Now, I love Huey being called Hugh Campbell because Hugh Campbell actually sounds like a respectable government official. So I think that's hilarious. Now, just a different cha a change in name can transform be so transformative. So Hugh Campbell works for the FBSA, the Federal Bureau of Superhuman Affairs. Love it. Love this world building. I love that they even have the commissary right there. I'd love to go in there. Let's go hang out. So there he is. <laughs> Taking or it's supposed to be the other way around, and you'll in this very trailer, they they you know Huey or Hugh admits that maybe he is Huey, and it should be the other way around. That you know doing things by the books doesn't work, <clears throat> which is a bit of a dangerous attitude. I think you need to do both. I think having one of them in the FBSA and one of them you know running the boys is a very good setup. All right, so he's like, uh, I like the, I like their exchange. She's like, maybe you're just not a jerk. Now this is fascinating to me. So here's Mother's Milk who got his family back. And he of course has dedicated his whole life to fighting supers. And yet his daughter has a seven themed birthday party. And I love kudos to the, to the show for creating all these uh, you know, party, party paraphernalia from the seven, you know, all this branded stuff. I think that's just absolutely fabulous. You got the balloon, you have um, <clears throat> his daughter is dressed up as Starlight. Look at that. Look, they got everybody back there. Oh, it's so funny. I love the cartoon versions of them. Those are all a bunch of murderers. Hilarious. But there, you know, he really wants to play happy family. He wants to give his daughter the birthday party that she wants. But I'm sure inside it's killing him. So uh, I'm curious, his own son, look at that, his own son or, or family friend, 
because that boy wasn't in the family photo, dressed up as Homelander. And look, that guy too, also for some reason, I'm, is dressed up as Homelander. I'm like, why is that adult wearing a costume at the party? Uh, and then Homelander's even on the cake. That's nuts. That's incredible considering that Mother's Milk knows what the guy's really done. But he's a good actor and he just wants his child to have a nice party. Now here we have the head of Vought, Giancarlo Esposito. He has a great line here saying that your real superpower is not that. I love the way he, you know, it's so degrading. He's like, her superpower is pretty impressive. And Giancarlo Esposito, who has no superpowers, at least that we know of, um, manages to make it seem like it's nothing. Uh, and that he is actually the more powerful of the two of them in the room. And that's amazing that he, that he projects that. So he's like, it's not this. It's the ability to uh, bend the world to your will. And that, I mean, there is a lot of power in that. I mean, I think just because she's undercover doesn't mean she can't pick up some interesting life lessons. So A-Train and Homelander are still not getting along. And Maeve is like, I'm going to do something about it. I would love for Maeve to come into her own this season. And I think that's what's probably going to happen. Boy, Homelander gets all the covers, man. All right. And she's thinking about it. Maybe she'll, maybe she'll uh, take his advice. And then look at this. They're speaking of publicity. Look what happens in the back. I wonder who that is who's falling to their death. And like the boys doesn't shy away from the aftermath of that. And they cut it to make it look uh, like it's Homelander, but it's a different building. So this is a different scene. It's a different, yeah, it's a different building. So Homelander is so thrilled to see his fans um, who have, you know, very ripped from the headlines t-shirts. That t-shirt says, sorry, Snowflake, I'm with, Ho uh, I'm with Homelander. And you can see that guy on the right is dressed like one of the lead instigators in the January 6th. Uh, I believe he's in jail right now. Uh, so I think the, this is to show that there are some people that, despite what Homelander did, they still support him. And he really needs that right now, so that he's particularly happy to see them. Look at, see the look of disbelief on his face? That's so great. Even Homelander can't believe it. He's like, wow. Uh, he's like, I truly can get away with anything, which is, I, don't, I mean, I don't want to get too political here, but, you know, some recent politicians have said that. All right. In the last five or six years. So Hugh... Hugh Campbell's like, it's just not working. We're gonna have to do it your way. And Butcher's like, hell yeah, we are. So there's the, the female making her usual, some moves there, taking care of business. Victoria Newman, she seems to be at Vaught. Now here, there's Maeve, and she has a little treat for uh, Butcher, which we'll see in a moment. But first we see a shot of Soldier Boy back in the day. Um, I think it's interesting you have these two different takes on Americana. I think they're both clearly supposed to be Captain America stand-ins, yet they represent, I think, very different times in American society. And also, I think Soldier Boy is like a ghost of Christmas or Americana or Vought past to Homelander because this is the guy who had the job before him. And what happened to him? You know, Vought didn't keep him. So that's something to consider. Uh, so, I, But here you see he throws off to his sidekick. He throws off his uh, bazooka. He's like, yeah, take this. Uh, very unceremoniously. That's great. I think that we see this guy later. I think he grows up to be gunpow gunpowder. All right, so anyway, because it's the same uniform with some alterations as he gets older. And that's uh, Soldier Boy's uh, file, and it seems he was actually arrested, and that's one of the reasons they, I guess they were able to get him to uh, agree to the Vought trials. And so I, that speaks a little bit to his character. That he was a, cr a criminal. And she's like, I got something for you. Uh, and look, you can see, I think this is a flashback, and that's his shield, which is just, they, speaking of Falcon and Winter Soldier, they had someone just kill somebody with a shield uh, on that show. So it's happening again, although this, he has a pointy shield, does even more damage. You know, a lot of you have said Jensen Ackles is an incredible actor. Never seen him in anything. I missed Supernatural. But I'm very excited to join the Jensen Ackles fan club uh, when I, once I see him on this show. So she says, here you go. This is a dose that'll give you superpowers for 24 hours. And so that means, from a writing perspective, okay, what's gonna happen at the end of the 24 hours? I'm sure we'll have some scene in the show where it's like, oh, the clock's running down. Can you get out of here in time? What's gonna happen? I think that'll be interesting. I think it's, inter it's green instead of blue. And Butcher's like, oh yeah. She's like, you're gonna need it. I don't love that it's, uh, you know, you take it like uh, hard, hard drugs, but I think that's the point. 
the show has not been afraid to maybe sometimes have a negative influence because they're like, we got to go for it. And if we don't do it real, it's not going to register the same way. So I'm like, okay. And so I, I like his powers kind of flickering on for the first time. He's gonna, this is a high the butcher, it seems, is going to get addicted to. So I like this shot of Soldier Boy returning, you know, very different than when Captain America first was uh, in the current uh, time, right? Uh, he was all sparkly clean. Uh, but, you know, Soldier Boy's having a very different situation and doesn't seem to like what he sees very much. So he has a new power. In the comics, he never had this blast from the middle of his chest. And he doesn't seem to have it in the flashback. So maybe this is something that happened to him while he was in captivity. Can you get an extra dose of powers? Can Vaught continue to experiment on you? I'm curious as to what's going on with his power set. So I, I, I love this because they're, they can't believe what they see. And this is this destruction. That's incredible. That's invincible level destruction. And invincible was helped by the fact that they're an animated show. So they can have a little bit of a bigger budget, so to speak, because everything just has to be done in animation. So to see this in live action, I think is really awesome. I wonder why he blew this building away. I wonder if there's something about his past. Uh, maybe this is where he used to live or something and he doesn't like, the, he doesn't like what he sees. I'll be very curious to see what the context is of that scene. Now, I love what Mother's Milk says to Butcher. He says, the whole point of what we do is that no one should have this kind of power. So it makes you a bit of a hypocrite that you're, you're wielding it. And look at that shot. He's loving it. And I like this. So, you know, he, in the comics, Butcher never had laser vision. But what's interesting is that, that of course, is Homelander's most iconic superpower set. We all love to see it. So... I think they did this to set it up that they're, these two men are actually very much the same in many ways, including down to their superpower. So, uh, you know, very much Butcher becoming that which he claims to hate and that he's fighting against. So I think that's brilliant. But Butcher counters, he's pretty good with these powers. He has super strength too, like all soup, like all um, soups. And look, he really like takes that guy out. And he says to Mother's Milk, he says, it's about leveling the playing field. Uh, and so I think I can understand both of their arguments, but I think Mother's Milk has a very strong one that should be, both should be considered. So that see, that's the same helmet the other guy had on. So of course, there's slowed aging for the. I mean, he, could it be this if he was much younger at that time? It looks like it's like uh, the '70s there, so maybe it could be the same individual. But it looks like a kind of like a jacked up version of that same costume. Now that he's gone out on his own to become gunpowder. So very nice editing. See, I told you. What's the th greatest thing that Ryan got from his dad? The laser eyes. But he's, of course, been raised very differently with loving parents. Although, a lot of, tra a lot of trauma. So look at this. Doesn't Lori Holden look fantastic? This is a flashback, uh, but she looks great. Scarlet Witch is such a great character. Even the spoof of her looks amazing. But she looks phenomenal. So she comes out, and boy, again, very, you know... <laughs> That's, you know, all the powers are funny. It's like it, the end result is the same no matter what the power set is. It's almost like instead of laser eyes, she just has like laser balls. <laughs> but it's like the same kind of effect that Homelander has, just a different delivery method. So uh, Homelander's saying, they're going to see the real me. And I like cutting that with Maeve, use, you know, practicing with her sword, because maybe Maeve is finally like, she's going to be the real her, finally after her own run-ins with the pub publicity department last season. So let's see. He's so great. This whole cast is very talented, but Anthony Starr really is what sells this at the end of the day. Hey, look, that's the same guy who was at the birthday party, right? That's interesting. Hmm. Um, we have a musical segment, clearly, it seems. Uh, they look great. I love that Frenchie is such a cool guy, and yet he, uh, he's like really into the musical sequence. I love that. Uh, and then the Deep is back, and you know, his usual shenanigans. Uh, I like that Black Noir has like such a nice lunch there. That's hilarious. Don't give him an almond joy. Uh, that's another shot of A-Train with the soda commercial. Things are not Victoria Newman. Now that here, is Starlight at the at the at the news organization, uh, Vought News, taking on it seems Soldier Boy. So we'll see what's happening there. And Mother's Milk is on the scene. A lot of people seem to be on the scene. Lots of stuff going on there. All right. Now that is Swato 
from payback. It's like an Ant-Man take. <laughs> uh, he can get very small, I think, but I like him being big size there with his wings. That looks really hilarious. Uh, seems to be like South America or some kind of like maybe, you know, drug cartel operation. And it almost looks like Butcher can't totally control his powers either. And here's Soldier Boy emerging. This is to me, you know, he's a Captain America stand-in, but this to me is very Weapon X as well. And I'm sure that must be intentional. So he comes out and they're like, oh my God, it's Soldier Boy. And I don't think they, so he's, I think obviously they wouldn't know that he could do this, but uh, the female comes in and blocks, saves Frenchie, which is great. And he explodes, knocking her through the, through the wall there. This power, I don't love his power. Like, I think it's cinematic, it's, it's visually interesting as you can see, it's raw power and it can do a lot of damage, but uh, it's not that much fun from like a, a fight perspective. He just, you know, just like explodes from his stomach and his chest all the time. I mean, that's, that's not, there doesn't show a lot of skill and maneuvering in my opinion. So, uh, I, but he, I mean, he has other abilities too. Obviously. He has his shield, he can fight, but I, I don't, you know, I don't know how much I love that power off, you know, right here. We'll see. I love this show and I have a lot of faith in them. So I'll probably love it when we see it in the actual show. So what did you think of the trailer? Are you excited to return to this show after such a long break? And how do you think it can compete with Obi-Wan and Ms. Marvel? Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.